The holidays are here, folks, and I am in shorts and a t-shirt. This is Post Production Pie. Welcome to another weekly Light Your Medit, which is going to get started right after we play our bumper. Joe, where's that bumper? There it is. All right, in this week's Lightroom 4 edit, we have an image here that was submitted by David Hill. David, thank you for submitting your raw image for editing. It's taken us a little bit of time to get to it, but, uh, well, late is better than never, is it not? Let's take a look and see how this image was shot. This was shot on a Nikon. We know that right away because it is an NEF file, which, unless I'm crazy, you are a Nikon user. Uh, but uh, Nikons make great cameras, guys. Don't go and flame me in the comments. <laughs> we own both. Just calm down. Okay, so let's check this out. It was shot at 1 one sixty of a second at f4 ISO 320 on a 17 to 55 millimeter f2.8 lens at 34 millimeters. All right, it's a great shot. I dig it. And uh, really what's going for this shot is I, I love the overall expression. I love the way you've captured this beautiful girl's attention as she's looking into the camera. And uh, it's just a very sweet image. And that's kind of how we want to produce it. I want it to be sweet. I want it to be bright. I want it to really kind of bring out her personality in this image. And right now, we have a few problem areas that we want to fix through post-production. So basically what I'm noticing is that we didn't get enough light kind of on the inside of her face. We have these highlights over here on the forehead, cheek, nose, on the skin over here on her arms. But her face is rather dark. Now at this point, if we were to brighten up her eyes too much, it is going to look a little bit unnatural. So let's focus kind of on keeping it natural. And with all of our Lightroom 4 edits, we are, of course, going to be using the SR Lounge Lightroom 4 preset system. But don't worry, all of you that don't have the system, we're going to be going over all the settings and everything right afterwards as well. So everybody can benefit, guys. This is of mutual benefit to everybody. Let's get started. I'm going to go over here to my soft portrait mixology. I am, of course, using version 1.3. If you guys haven't updated your Lightroom 4 preset system, be sure to send an email to contact at srlounge.com. We'll send you one out right away. Now, what we always say is whenever you are producing your image, you always start uh, with a preset that's closest to where you want to go. And we have one. It's this extra soft color, which is designed specifically for close-up portraits and of children, which we have both here. So let's select that first. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down to my exposure. And let's take this up by around one stop. And don't worry, it's going to be really bright right now, and that's totally fine because we're going to fix that. Uh, let's go into our base tones. Let's make sure we've done a portrait flatten over here. And let's go into our shadows and blacks, and we're going to do a heavy brighten, okay? Now, why did I take the uh, brightness up so high? Because at this level, basically with it this bright, I'm really able to see whether these highlights are starting to blend with the shadow areas. And I do start to see that blending going on now. So now what I can do is make some final tweaks. I'm just going to go back to exposure, dial this down to 0.5. And at this point, we can start going into our right side and making fine tuning adjustments as we need. But let's zoom in and take a look at everything and see where we're at right now. I just want to see the detail and make sure everything else is good. Detail is great. Don't need to worry about extra sharpening. Let's go over to the right side and let's go over the settings that we've applied so far. All right, I feel like Tony Horton doing P90X. Great job so far. Okay, let's go. Let's see. We have uh, exposure at 0.5. We have contrast zeroed out. And we might even want to drop contrast a little bit just to reduce some of that contrast in the midtones. And we can add it back in certain areas with our tone curve. All right, we're taking uh, highlights down to negative 30. And I actually want to drop this a little bit lower. Let's drop it to negative 60. Let's drop whites to negative 50. I'm going to actually take highlights down to negative 80. This is going to serve to kind of pull down these bright highlights in the skin just a bit more than we have already. With shadows and blacks, they look pretty good where they're at. I might raise shadows just a little bit more to say plus 40. And then we'll keep blacks around 50, somewhere in that neighborhood. Actually, 60 was totally fine. Let's leave it right there. We have clarity at negative 25, which is great. It's acting as a softening effect. And it's also just uh, essentially smoothing over the lighting effect because we do have those strong highlights. So it's doing a good job smoothing that out. With vibrance, we have that at negative 5. And then we have a nice little S shape in our tone curve, a very subtle uh, contrast boosting curve. And what I'm going to do is just bump up the shadows a little bit because I don't want that much shadow contrast. I'm going to bring up my midtones a tiny bit as well and bring up the mid-tone highlights as well. And you'll see that this is essentially just flattening out the image a bit more than we initially had. 
okay? And we can add back contrast at any time. So don't worry about that so much. Right now, let's get all these base adjustments and everything dialed in. Now, along with that soft portrait preset that we use, the extra soft portrait preset comes an HSL adjustment that's essentially reducing some of the color out of the skin just to give us a little bit more natural skin tones. So we're pulling out 20 reds in the saturation, uh, 10 orange. We're adding a little bit of yellow, adding a little bit of green to counteract that. And this is basically really helpful for lifting out the pinks, lifting out that magenta color in our skin that can sometimes get a little bit too crazy. All right, we can make an additional adjustment in a minute also with temperature. Sharpening and noise reduction. We have a standard amount of sharpening, uh, 70, 1.5, 10, and 30. With noise reduction, we're going on a little bit on the higher side. And again, this is a soft portrait preset or extra soft portrait preset. So the additional noise reduction is serving to kind of smooth out the pores a little bit and just give us a softer overall look to the image. And with lens videating, we have a standard amount of reverse lens videating, just serving to brighten the edges a little bit so we have even edge to edge, edge to edge contrast. Did I say edge to edge? I have a buddy named Ed. He's a good guy. I actually just shot his wedding not too long ago. He's a college buddy too. That was fun. Ed, if you're watching this, what's up, buddy? I'm sure he's not watching this because uh, he could care less. <laughs> uh, let's drop our tint now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a little trick here. This is a little trick I like to do with my uh, temperature to make sure that I don't have too much pinks. And uh, I'll, I'll do this quite a bit with an image. I'll take it down to a point where it's very neutral. So basically my temperature is a point where all I see is kind of the skin tones and, and seeing whether it's too pink or whatever. So at this point, what I'm going to do is drop that uh, tint until I get down to a point where basically I've neutralized not all, but the majority of the pinks in their skin. So that way we don't have too much. Now at this point, what I would do is raise up my temperature. And from here, we can just raise it up till we get the warmth that we basically want in the image. And I think right around 43, 4400, I mean, that's good for my taste. You guys might want it warmer, slightly cooler. It's really up to you. I'm going to go with as neutral as possible. And from here, I'm going to make one final exposure adjustment. And what I'm looking at really is just her face. I'm not looking anywhere else, not looking at her arms or anything, because we're going to fix that in just a second. Okay, I am going to bump this up one more to 4400. I think it's a little bit nicer, slightly more pink or sorry, more yellow, sorry. Now, let's grab our adjustment brushes and let's start doing a little fine tuning here. So what we're gonna do is grab our negative one-stop burn. Once again, if you don't have the preset system, just pause the video, dial in the settings, and then uh, go buy the preset system because it'll save you a ton of time. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. No, but seriously. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to paint in at the bottom of the image, and we're going to just paint over the hands and arms and over the, essentially this, this bottom side of the image. So we're essentially just, uh, gosh, I keep saying essentially and all these other words multiple times. What we're doing is just uh, balancing out the exposure because we have a slightly brighter image on the bottom and a darker image on the top. So we're going to balance this out, and then I'm going to fine-tune it in just a second. So as you can see right now, we do see and notice that exposure difference, and that's because it's too strong. So let's dial back the exposure change to around 0 0.4, 0 0.5. I think 0 0.5 is a good number. We can even go down maybe one more step to maybe 0 0.6. And what we're going to do now is feather off this effect. So while holding Alt or Option on a Mac, I'm going to feather out this effect. Make sure your feather is, uh, is all the way up and make sure your flow is all the way up. And we're going to subtract it out while feathering the edge so we get a really subtle transition edge between where we're basically darkening and where it's brighter. This side on her arm, I'm just going to pull it down over here so it doesn't look like it's basically darker on one side. I'm going to do the same thing over here, making sure that we get her little stuffed animal and everything in the shot, or making sure that we get it feathered. And then just keep working it until it looks about right. Now our final mask, if I hit O, looks something like this, and it's looking completely, totally fine. I'm just going to subtract out that little bit of darkening right there, and then this towel, or not towel, that's, that's her stuffed animal cute. My son's, uh, his stuffed animal right now is a towel. I don't know why, but he cannot sleep without his towel. And I'm not, I don't, and it's not like a blankie. It's not like it's a nice, it's literally like a hand towel. Yeah. Like wipe your hands after you wash your hands towel. I don't understand it myself. It's kind of frankly embarrassing a little bit. So anyway, <laughs> this looks great right here. I might adjust my exposure one more time just to see if I like it where it's at. And I think I do. I might also like it just a tiny bit brighter. Again, we're going with that really bright, whimsical look for this image because that's what we have. We have this cute girl, very whimsical look into the camera, and it looks gorgeous.
Now from here, I wouldn't do too much eye brightening. Her eyes are a little bit dull, but the problem is if we go and brighten these uh, eyes right now, it's gonna look very, very unnatural, mainly because we didn't have a lot of eye light filling into the eyes to begin with. If you had some light filling into the eyes and then you brighten a little bit more, that would make more sense, but for here, I'm gonna say let's avoid it. The last thing I'm gonna do is uh, I wanna make one tweak to this little uh, brush right here because I can notice a transition right there, so I'm just gonna pull it up by 0.1. Okay, and then I'm gonna just grab another graduated brush this time, subtract up from the bottom, and what I'm doing this time is I just wanna darken the surface from the bottom a little bit, just to kind of, uh, you know, not let it be so distracting. Right now it's a very bright highlight, and so it's gonna pull attention away from the center of the image. This is looking pretty solid right here, everybody. Let's take a look at the before image by hitting the backslash key. Here's what we are starting with. Here's what we ended with with the color. I like it. I dig that soft look. If you want it to be a little bit warmer, it's really up to you as far as warmth and everything. I think you could go anywhere between 43 and 4800 on this and it would look, it would be just fine. So add warmth to taste, just kind of like salt and pepper. All right, let's create a virtual copy by hitting Control apostrophe or Command apostrophe on a Mac. I'm gonna hit V and I'm gonna create a black and white because to be honest, if I were to produce this image for myself, I would go with a black and white look because I think it works perfectly for this image. I'm gonna brighten up the exposure a bit and then I'm gonna add a bit of contrast, reduce the shadows and reduce the blacks just to give me a little bit more contrast in the overall in the image and add just a little bit more exposure to compensate as well. All right, so there is our black and white. And if we want, why not go through and add a curve and make a nice filmic look with our black and white too? So I'm gonna to go to my antique curves. I created another virtual copy, by the way. If you go and look at my uh, little bar down here, you can see I have three virtual copies, or well, three copies, so one the original and two, two copies. All right, so let's go back to my uh, little, uh, well, the develop module. It's not so little, it's the main part of Lightroom. And let's jump down into our antique curves, and what I'm gonna do is I want it to have a nice fade, uh, but I still want it to be kind of punchy. So I'm gonna either go with a neutral wash or a neutral punch. Let's try first the black and white neutral punch. It doesn't do enough for me on this one, so let's go, oh sorry, not neutral punch, I meant vintage punch. Uh, let's see, that looks nice, but I think I still would like the fade a little bit better. So I'm gonna apply the fade and I'll decide if I want a bright fade or a neutral fade. I think I want a neutral, actually let's just go with the bright fade. And then I'm just gonna brighten up a little bit more. We'll add a little bit more blacks to the image just to get some nice clipping and contrast in the blacks, a little bit of contrast. And this is looking solid and let's go back right over here to our special effects and we're gonna add a bit of film grain. All right, I'm gonna add some medium film grain to the image and if we want to, we can add a tiny little vignette. It's really up to you. Uh, I'm gonna say no vignette for this just because I kind of like it a little bit bright, but I will adjust just the pre-crop vignette. So I don't want a post-crop, but I do want to adjust just the pre-crop vignette a little bit just to pull it in and darken the edges in a very, very subtle manner. All right, so we have our three effects. We have our standard color right here. There was the original. We have our black and white, and we have our filmic black and white right next to it. Great job, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next tutorial.